Hello and welcome to Mongabe India. Today we are in Agumbe and going to talk to P Gauri Shankar. Gauri Shankar is a wildlife biologist and the founder and director of Kalinga Foundation. He recently published his discovery of four king cobra species which was believed to be just one species for the last 185 years. King cobra was first defined as a species in 1836 by Danish researcher Theodor Cantor. who gave it the scientific name Hamadryas hanna in 1945 it was renamed Ophiophagus hanna while many speculated that there could be multiple species of the world's longest venomous snake gauri shankar's research has led to the discovery of four distinct species Ophiophagus bungarus commonly known as the sunda king cobra Ophiophagus salvatana the luzon king cobra and the two species found in india Ophiophagus hanna the northern king cobra and Ophiophagus kalinga the western ghats king cobra this indeed is a fascinating discovery so let's find out more about it from the man himself hi gori how are you hey shalesh good man how are you i am good i am good my first question to you gori is that what made you think of king cobras and why this particular studies you follow oh, why this topic when i started my field work in agumbe you know during my field work i started rescuing king cobras in people's house you know there's a king cobra in somebody's house we had to rescue and relocate it right during one of those rescues i got bitten i had to go to the hospital and there's no anti venom for king cobra of course i had anti venom from thailand But I knew it won't work because the anti venom was different, right? It's from different population. So when it didn't work, I almost died, right? But I survived, and that's when I decided: look, we have to find out whether they are different species, different population. Only if we know this fundamental question to be answered that they are different species, that is when you're going to come up with different anti venom, species specific, region specific anti venom. that is why i chose this stuff snake bites are a public hazard in india and uh, out of the big four the cases of snake bites from king cobra are less so does this study help in finding more about the anti venom definitely you are right the, right now the biggest problem we have is the four big four venomous snakes like you said cobra or crate rustles and sosket or close to 58000 or 60000 people died due to snake bites in india every year and more than 200000 people permanently get disabled because of the snake bite king cobras don't fall on, into that big four or big five or six luckily they are restricted to the western ghats and northeast and eastern part the good thing is people here in western ghats they coexist with them very very few encounters and they are found only in deep jungles though there there is human animal conflict uh the snake bites or the king cobra bites are very very low right now but if this kind of development activity continues and we are losing their habitat if the king cobra lose their habitat and in future they might become like a cobra or a crate or a russell or a sasquatch they we will reach that stage where human and king cobra interaction will be up and that is when the snake bites might occur so it's no harm in knowing their different species level and trying to find out their uh, or design a specific antivenom does this study also serve at a larger scale in a larger conservation uh, uh, goal definitely if you see in some of the good habitats where we have tigers leopards lions or elephants you know they are the apex predators or apex animals or umbrella species using that we could uh, conserve or protect the entire landscape so similarly if you see in the western ghats we don't you know population of tigers and leopards it's very low so king cobra could be that umbrella species or king cobra could be that keystone species because king cobra is an apex predator king cobra feeds on other snakes close to 30 to 40 different species of snakes so that means the entire food chain and king cobra is on the top of the food chain so if king cobra could be used as uh, Uh, in a keystone species to protect the entire landscape and western ghats are highly biodiverse uh, forest 
in the entire world. So we have to protect the species and the landscape. What kind of trade uh, king cobras have and what is the status of the prey base? Oh yeah. King cobras, like I mentioned, they feed on close to 30 to 40 species of snakes, meaning cobras, crates, russells, or even pit vipers, pythons, name it, they're going to feed on it. So if the king cobra is there, that means the entire prey base is healthy. And it also, king cobras also help humans, particularly the villagers, in controlling the population of other snakes. If there's a good population of prey base, that is, uh, the snakes, and the frogs are doing good, frogs are doing good, then the uh, insects are doing good or any uh, other organism which the entire food chain depends on. When it comes to conservation, it cannot be done without the community's yes. uh, involvement and their best practices. Out of these four species, you have named two of these species uh, after the local names. Can you tell us more about that? Yes, and I have been working in the Central Western Ghats, particularly in, uh, in, uh, in Karnataka for a long time. I've le learned a lot from the local people. These local people here in Malnad region are very closely connected, culturally connected with the species. They consider king cobra as their ancestors. And uh, there's a belief also if the king cobra passes through their plantation or paddy fields that year, they're going to get bumper prizes. There's a lot of positivity. And they also conserve them, they don't kill them. Right? So, in honor of them, I wanted to name and give the scientific name uh, as Kalinga, which is in a Kannada term for king cobra. So it's Ophiophagus Kalinga. So this is basically to make our community proud about their cultural attachment to the species and their conservation efforts they, they've been doing for centuries now. Yes. So I wanted the entire world to know how these people are connected with the species. So I hope our Karnataka people will feel proud about a king cobra being named in their language. And the second species again, Ophiophagus salvatana from Luzon. Luzon is one of the largest islands in the uh, Philippines. And this is the most endangered species as of now between these four species of king cobras. So I named even that species out of their local language, Tokluk language, uh, salvatana, because I want them to follow what we have done here in Malnad region. I wanted them to feel proud the way our Malnad people are feeling proud because they have to protect them. The community should be involved. Their people kill them. They are due to fear. Of course, in Malnad people, they, are, they have fear, but they have more respect towards the species. So I want this as a good model, which can be used in Philippines, in Luzon Island, and the conservation status goes up to that species. What is the difference you see uh, between the practices Malnad people use or other people uh, use? Yes. What is the status of communities and involvement. Yeah, they, they, the fear takes over, you know, they just unnecessarily kill them. They prosecute them, they just kill them and they're, they're scared. And of course, king cobras are also looked at like any other chicken or any wild meat. So food and skin, once they kill it, they use the skin also for the leather product, uh, the pet trade for Europe and America. But luckily, the no snakes from Western Guards are going into the international market. The protection level here is quite high thanks to the forest department and the community to protect the species. That's, That's a big difference, I see. Yeah. So you work with different people in different uh, countries, different regions. Uh, what are the challenges of doing this kind of a study and cooperation and collaboration with international uh, players? King Cobra was discovered in 1836 by Cantor. And since then, many speculated there could be different species but no one established it. They took a long time because they didn't have proper technology at that time. But morphologically, people knew they looked different, but they, they couldn't establish it. So with the present DNA work, I managed to say there are four different species. Challenges would be collecting samples, king cobras are venomous snake. Capturing them in the wild or in uh, anywhere, collecting samples is the most dangerous thing you could do, right? If it is a frog or even a bird, bird or any plant species, it's easy to collect them take it to the lab and get the DNA done. But King Cobra being a lo longest venomous snake is the biggest challenge I have. And you can't use the uh, camera traps also. Camera traps will not work. We need their animals. tissues. We need their ventral scales as a tissue sample to extract the DNA. So we had to capture them and do it definitely very scientifically. Along with that, I also collected samples in the zoos, captive ones and museums. Traveling across 
to the in you know, Europe and other countries to collect the samples was the biggest challenge. Financial funds, you know, because it's a uh, it uh, spilled over to eight years. You know, it's a really long study. Um, so it was a challenge. Getting funds was a big challenge. And permits, king cobra is highly protected in India and other countries also. So getting permits to collect samples was for one more challenging thing we had. I took like two years to get the permits, and we have in almost eleven states in India we have king cobras. So almost seven or nine states I managed to get the permits and collect the samples. So these are the challenges challenges I faced while doing this project. Now, of course, leaving the family, friends, and spending more time in the field or traveling was another challenge.